it's been so long since we've been to a racetrack. I've got to get back on the road to Indy. You know what makes me sad? Summer 2016 is almost over. And you know what that means? Ugg boots and pumpkin spice lattes. But do you know what makes me even sadder than that? The Mazda Road to Indy season is nearly complete, and with it, an incredible season of racing will be over. But before I go and curl up around a tub of ice cream and start eating my feelings, we've got two more weeks of racing left. This weekend, it's the 16th round of the Indy Lights Championship presented by Cooper Tires. The summer break is over, and we're in upstate New York. Welcome to Watkins Glen International. Welcome to Road to Indy TV. I'm with Dave Poplars from Andretti Autosport, and he's simply known in the paddock as Poppy. I don't really have to ask. It's a pretty simple nickname. Yeah, it just kind of scrubbed off the big, big last name. So tell us, what does it take to make an operation like the Indy Lights program for Andretti Autosport such a successful program known around the world? What goes into that, running the Indy Lights side of things here? Um, honest to God, it's getting the right guys. It wants, if everyone's doing their deal and clicking right along, then I should be able to hang out and just kind of watch. <laughs> so one question I always ask the team managers is the managing of personalities. And I'll start with your drivers first. You have maybe the most diverse group of drivers in the Indy Lights paddock under this one tent right here. You got Dalton Kellett, a quiet young Canadian. You have Dean Stoneman, who in his own right has had a phenomenal story, was on the path to Formula One before health issues kind of set him back and brought him here to the United States. And then you've got everybody's favorite redneck, Shelby Blackstock. What is it like being the guy who has to manage all of those personalities and get all these cars running as fast as possible? It's, it's, there, there's a dynamic to it. Each driver needs to be worked and helped in, in different ways. Um, and the, the key is finding out how that, that is. So, and then you have three different, very different groups of guys working on these cars. You know, with some race teams, when they go back to the shop, everybody wears the same shirt. And then when you get to the track, you know, you have your guys in the, in the red shirts for Shelby, the green shirts for Dalton, and then the blue and white shirts for Dean. Talk, tell me about your crew guys. Who are the guys that make these cars run, get them, get them up and going, make this truck open and close every night? I mean, we've got six mechanics who are uh, working on the cars, actually. We have a gearbox guy and we have two transportation guys. And uh, basically, they all do work as a unit. If one car crashes, you'll see all different color shirts r around that one crashed car. So really, we are a team. We are Andretti Autosport. We, we, we do work as a team. But then again, if you're working on the 28 car, uh, you know that, that's your focus, and you, you have to uh, you do the things that it takes to make that car special to you. It's your it's your hot rod for, for the season. So, the Dave Poplars, the man they call Poppy. You're a legend among the Indy Lights paddock, and you're a king among men. Thanks for the time. Tony, it's really nice talking with you. The 2016 Mazda Road to Indy season is coming to an end, and all year we've traveled all around North America going to beautiful towns and cities, but it's tough to argue that we've been somewhere more beautiful than where we're at this weekend for the 16th round of the Indy Lights Championship presented by Cooper Tires. We're here in Watkins Glen, New York, and specifically this afternoon, we're at the beautiful Seneca Lake here on Boat Dock number one, and I'm joined by a man who's always, almost always smiling whenever I see him in the paddock at any racetrack, and that's Schmidt Peterson Motorsport driver, Andre Negrau. Andre, you're always smiling, and it's so refreshing to see. How are you this afternoon? Very good, very good. Thank you very much, Tony, for this opportunity again, and uh, such a beautiful place. And not only is the scenery beautiful here, not only has the weather been phenomenal on this Labor Day weekend, but the racing was incredible, and you said it, a very successful day for you and your Schmidt Peterson Motorsport drive, uh, team. You guys come away with the podium finish here. Yeah, well, I did a great job doing the race and I finished P3 on the podium. My teammate doesn't have this uh, lucky today, unfortunately, for the championship for him is uh, not, so bad. not so good. But, uh, well, P3 for me is good. Take some points from the team as well. And uh, looking forward for Laguna, absolutely. 
And so, you, you know, you talk about the podium finish, and you and I were talking about this before the interview began. You know, your 2016's kind of been a bit of a, a roller coaster, I guess you could say. A good start in the spring, and then when we got to Indianapolis for the month of May, things really did not go well for you at all there. And now, ever since the summer kind of heated up and we're heading into the fall, you've been knocking out podium results. It's got to feel great to be finishing on a high note. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Like you said, uh, my year has been like uh, up and down, up yeah. and down a little bit, but then now, after Road America, uh, the team did a great job with my car, and uh, now I'm a little bit more habituated with the car, with the tires. Uh, absolutely, I think I can, I, I can do a podium as well in Laguna. Uh, it's getting better and better, so looking for again to, to Laguna Seca. So I mean, when you're here in the United States, you know, you're away from Brazil, what do you do to pass your time when you're not at the racetrack, when you're not training to be in the race car? What are we going to catch Andre doing for fun? Where do you like to go and spend your time? Well, I train here a lot. I try to keep my shape, you know, definitely in a good position mm -hmm. to back on the car because we don't train so much in the car, so you have to train here a lot. So I did a couple of races in triathlon in Miami. Mm -hmm. So swimming, bike, and, and run. So yeah, definitely I, I train a lot every day. Uh, sometimes, of course, I go in the beach mm -hmm. or I hanging out with my dad's friends. They have a boat there, mm -hmm. so we go around Miami in the boat. But um, a part of my all my time, I think I stay home and, and training. Well, and and go shopping for cool sunglasses, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, so look at sometimes this guy's style, folks. <laughs> look at this guy's style. We're, we're here on Seneca Lake right now on the boat dock. You know, there's water around us. The boats are bobbing up and down. You talked about your dad owns a boat. You guys are going out. What are you doing when you're out on the water? Well, when I'm on the water, I definitely go in the jet skis. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, something with an engine. Yeah. Something, something with an engine. engine. I don't like something. You no, know, you no. Know, surfing is nice, but you know, right. I have to. Oh, no. all that physical labor. Yes. You don't want to do that. No, I don't know. No. Out of everywhere the road to India has taken you here in 2016, what's maybe been, if you can narrow it down, what's been your favorite? What's been your favorite place we've gone to this year? Uh, I can say a different, a different places like Phoenix. I really enjoy it. Really? Yeah. It's, I, I mean, I know it's the desert, but I, I really enjoy that. You know, that atmosphere in the little oval there. Yeah. It's the first oval for me. I, this is why I think is my first impression here in the U.S. Absolutely. Does one racetrack stick out in your in your mind more than any other? Uh, the 500. Oh, getting to drive at Indianapolis yeah, Motor Speedway. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then certainly. I stay. Then I stay for the race as well. But it's such amazing because I know. Well, living in Europe, I I've been in such a different big race. Mm -hmm. So Monte Carlo, Le Mans. Oh my gosh. So when you come to Indianapolis, you say, oh my God, this is motorsport. This is what I'm talking about. These people inside the track, you know, lovers of the motorsport. It's such an amazing feeling. Well, and that's amazing that you hit on that because, you know, you have Le Mans, which is arguably one of the greatest spectacles in racing, and Monte Carlo, which may be the most beautiful racetrack in all of racing, yeah. but you don't have the the stadium culture like we do here in the United States. Yes. And you have this stadium, this this building just for racing and it's Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And then you shove 350,000 people in it. Absolutely, because you know, in, you're not more habituated about that. Because when you come to Europe, you just see, okay, 25,000 people, 35,000, 40. But when you see uh, 140, you say, oh my gosh, this is a lot of people. Right. I remember because, well, I'm one lucky to crash on that on that race right. on the oval, and then I walk into my to the truck, and I say, "Oh my God, this is amazing!" Also because I don't finish the race, but such amazing people here ask me uh, autographs, uh, photos, on, and everything. Ask about me, so it's, it's such a nice place. And, and it's a story like that, Andre, where you tell us about how you were taking part in in maybe the biggest race of your year, maybe even of your life. Bad luck, you crash out. But even on your walk back, after just wrecking out, you're able to recognize the opportunity, you're able to recognize where you're at, and you still take a positive out of it. And that is so impressive to me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, after that race, um, I can say, well, I cannot, you know, it's, um, it's a difficult part of my life because I, I crash, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. But in the same time, it's just a few people do this job, so right. you smile well, every I, I, time. I'm impressed by it. I'm always impressed by your positivity. Thank you for the time and your willingness to come out here and, and sit through all of this with us. Uh, we're going to enjoy a little bit more of this sunset, maybe get something to eat. Andre Negrau, thank you so much for the thank time. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank Andre you. Negrau from Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports.
The Mazda Indy Lights Grand Prix of Watkins Glen, presented by Cooper Tires, went green under clear blue skies. Round 16 was exciting from the get-go, as fifth place starter Zach Beach grabbed the lead from pole sitter and point leader Santiago Arudia on the first lap. As Veach drove away at the front of the field, Carlin racing driver Neil Alborico looked impressive as he rebounded from a poor qualifying session, going from last on the starting grid to seventh in the first two laps. Trouble struck Andretti Autosport drivers in the bus stop on lap six when teammates Shelby Blackstock and Dalton Kellett made contact, resulting in Kellett losing his front wing. Meanwhile, the championship point battle found itself heating up out on the track as Ed Jones brought the fight to Santiago Arudia. Arudia would not be able to contain the driver behind him in the points, and Jones took over P2 on lap 15. Arudia's problems were not over, though. After he fell off the podium thanks to his teammate Andre Negrau and Yugos racing driver Kyle Kaiser passing him in the following lap, Arudia experienced a left front tire failure in the S's, sending him into the barriers hard. After 25 laps of hard racing, the double checkered flags flew over the bright red Bellardi Auto racing machine of Zach Veach. Joining Veach on the podium for his second win of 2016 was Ed Jones and Negrau. Thanks to Jones' podium finish and Arudia's tough luck, the championship point battle is tighter than ever heading into the final weekend. Kyle Kaiser finished fourth, while Neil Alberico impressed many, driving from dead last on the grid to round out the top five. The Mazda Indy Lights Grand Prix of Watkins Glen, presented by Cooper Tires, is now in the books, and this weekend will surely be a memorable one. If not for the fantastic racing on track, then certainly it will be remembered for the gorgeous fall weather and the amazing scenery afforded to us by upstate New York. The 2016 Mazda Road to Indy is coming to an end, but before we turn off the lights on 2016, we're going to turn up one more time, as the kids say, as we head to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca for the Mazda Soul Red Finale to crown our three Mazda Road to Indy champions. For everybody at Road to Indy TV, I'm Tony Laporta. We'll see you down the road.